Hey guys, so today is going to be a short, probably, and stressful day in the life. Um, so this is kind of the downside to putting your life out there and when things don't go how you anticipate that they are gonna go, it is heartbreaking and it is very public because everyone is sharing in that heartbreak with you. Um, you know, not to over dramatize our situation because I think that it can have an okay ending. It's just not gonna have the ending we wanted it to have. I have a meeting coming up for work, so I cannot cry right now. Um, anyhow, I uh, wanted to do this real quick because I've been busy all morning with work and I have another meeting I'm getting ready to go to. But following up on the situation from yesterday, after a lot of soul searching and discussions and crying and just trying to figure out what to do, um, we really came to the situation that we were not comfortable with the two dogs that we have in the house together right now, having them together. And especially because we were hoping to work towards when we eventually go back into the world and work in school, we have to be able to leave them here at the house. And even though it's early on and I get that there's a lot of new variables, how last night went and it went from okay to very scary so quickly. I don't know if my husband and I will ever be very comfortable with leaving them here and that defeats the whole purpose of what we are trying to do. So we've made the sad decision to return Grizz to the rescue and hopefully he can find a family that we think at this point will be a better fit and potentially have no other dogs. He is a lovely dog. He's so loving. He just wants to get love. And I think that he just needs to be on his own or definitely not with another male dog. Um, and, um, you know, we kind of come to the decision that this, this has been a scary enough event that we're just putting another dog on hold for right now. That idea, we definitely think that we're not interested in getting a second male dog at this point. After reading on dominance issues, it definitely seems like it can be a big problem because they're fighting over dominance. They're fighting over love. They're fighting over being number one. If we ever got another dog in the future, it would need to be a female. And because my mother-in-law brings her female dog over that, um, you know, has been coming over and they, she gets along okay with Penguin, but she does not get along with other female dogs. We would just be setting ourselves up for another situation there of potentially a dog that's frequently in our home, not getting along with a new dog. So we are just going to pause it and hopefully help find Grizz, a new home that's a better fit, and we're very sad about it. But we have to do what's best for us, what's best for safety, what's best for the kids. And last night got scary so quickly that, I mean, obviously, if one of the kids were involved, it would be a completely horrible situation. So we just felt like it was not fair to have that hanging over their heads. And we're still in the early period, and I know, you know, everyone's adjusting and the dogs are adjusting but it just got bad really quick. And um, after you see a dog latch on like that and they're just instinctively not wanting to let go, it just is scary. So um, I'm gonna vlog more later because I've gotta go to this work meeting in like two minutes, but um, it's not the ending that we wanted. So it is about 3.30 and I really wish this was going to be a happier vlog than it was. This is how the whole day is gone. Um, so my husband took my car and he is taking the dog back to the rescue. Um, not the way that we hoped it would end. I don't know what, you know, it's, it's stressful because like we had started to get attached to him. And so like, you know, I, I feel like we could have tried, but I just, after seeing what I saw last night, I don't know if I'd ever be comfortable leaving them in the backyard and just wondering if they were gonna snap over something. And I don't want that behavior taught to Penguin and it was just not good. So, I don't know, I wish this was something else. I don't wish this was what the vlog was today, but this is what we're doing. So, so all we can do is just try to do the best thing by the kids and the best thing by the dog and just keep moving forwards. So, so I just hope that Penguin can get it. I mean, obviously it wasn't that long. I'm sure Penguin will be adjusted like within like a day or like 20 minutes apparently, but it's 
you know, probably more of an emotional toll on us than him, to be honest. He's just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> this is how my whole day is going. I mean, obviously, I really debated, dude, I just pull down everything? Do I just delete all the pictures off of Instagram? Like, what do you do in this situation? All the videos that I had filmed for last week are all running. And like, it's just, like they're all scheduled, they're all edited, I have nothing to put in their place. So I just pull them down and just pretend nothing happened? Or what, what do you do? But we already posted pictures on Instagram. Everyone on Instagram every, already knew. And it's like, I feel like this is probably important to show that like, there is a certain rate of failure with these things. And it feels really bad to say that. But I feel like just trying to pull everything down and pretend like nothing happened isn't fair. Um, and it sucks because this is not what we wanted. This is really not what we wanted. We wanted it to be happy. And I think that's kind of the worst part is we feel so blindsided, or at least for me, I feel so blindsided because it was going great. It was going so good and they were hanging out and you know, they seemed very chill and just this one snap moment showed me something very bad and there's no way to take that back. And um, you know, I've already said everything, but it just it stinks. It really stinks. Isabella's over here working on her aqua beads. She's doing some custom ones over here and then working on a Mickey. I'm not gonna like make them. I'm not gonna ask them about it on camera. I just, I'm not gonna do that to them, but they were both in the room when that happened last night. So they're both aware of the situation. And you know, when my husband and I came to the realization this morning, they were sad, but they understood because they saw what happened. So they're doing. I don't doing... know why I wasn't crying at all. I don't know why. I they understood. I was that one time, but like, yeah. I barely cried these days. Yeah, she barely cried. She's a tween. She's too cool for crying. That's a mom thing. No, that's not. <laughs> As a mom thing. Okay, we got some Taco Bell comfort food for dinner tonight. So this is what's for dinner. So I had a nail pop off. These ones just didn't stay on very well. So I'm going to take these off and put. Uh, new nails on so I'm putting the new color on and I am going to put Ori which is like kind of a purplish periwinkle color and I enjoyed having the kind of white manicure for summer it was good for just something different I'm trying to work through a number of the different colors just to try them out. Good morning and welcome to our vlog today. I'm printing off stuff for a meeting that I'm going to be in for about an hour or two coming up here shortly and then uh, we're going to figure out the rest of our day. So we are feeling better today. It was obviously an emotional day yesterday and tough decisions to make but we are moving forwards and obviously we have work and life and the school decision coming up which is our next big decision we have to make. Um, so there is a local board meeting tonight. The state's also having more board meetings. So it just seems like everything is up in the air and they're wanting the parents to pick between virtual and traditional routes in like four days. But we really don't know what it's gonna look like other than it seeming to kind of shake out that they won't really be connected to their home school, like the school that is their like place that they would normally go to uh, because the virtual teachers are going to be a different group of teachers and all that. So anyhow, I'm so conflicted. I feel like we probably need to do the virtual for safety and to take the load off of the classrooms, but I really hate missing that connection to our school. And I'll be honest, I just hate the format of the virtual. It's just basically you log in, watch a video and, you know, reply to questions. And I mean, it seems like it's easy to use, but it just seems so boring. Like I cannot imagine doing it for half a year. Like for kids that were like wanting to knock out school and then go work half a day, sure. Or, you know, knock out school and like take a college class or something. But uh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm very torn. I'm very conflicted. I posted about it on Instagram. So it's quite the week. It's quite the week going on around here. But. I'm taking you along on the ride because that's what's going on in life right now. And I think a lot of you, at least for the school situation, are having to deal with it too. 
Some school districts are just saying we're flat out going virtual or doing blended and they're just making the decision and going with that. Our district is giving us the choice, which I appreciate having the choice, that's great. But at the same time, it's horrible because we have to make that, de that decision and there's really no great decision. And I don't want to put the kids at risk, I don't want to put the teachers at risk, but at the same time, I hate the format of the virtual learning. So it's just really no, no good options. No good options right now. But um, I'm gonna get ready to do my meeting and then take you along for the rest of okay, our day. Okay, so we are done with that meeting and I'm gonna go grab some lunch real quick. These guys are working on Prodigy, the math game. <laughs> I like your ears, Natalie. <laughs> do battles on there they like learning math on there we might do a little bit of playing on the water bubble which has been a good purchase it's your penguin and we are probably going to because he's right at the line of this uh kennel so we are probably going to just move him into the larger kennel and then we can donate the smaller one or just keep it for traveling in the back of my car but then that way he can have a little bit more room so that will work out and things have gone back to just being calm and chill and is what it is. So it's just a different kind of week. So we are supposed to be hearing some more about the plan for back to school tonight. So hopefully we'll know more information. We haven't signed our kids up for virtual yet, but if we're going to do it, we need to do it quickly. because so we only have a few more days. I mean, really, who thought that we would ever end up in this situation? I know that's that's kind of the craziest thing for parents is because it's just like these are scenarios we never thought we would be in, but it's going to make the most of it. So anyhow, um, I don't have a lot on my agenda today, which I didn't think about when I started a vlog, but other than work stuff, which is obviously not exciting for you to see, I don't um, have a lot going on other than... You know, it's kind of a, a calm down day, so that's good. Um, I can just kind of focus on getting work done, which is good. So we are getting ready to have dinner. I just had another meeting and I've got one more tonight. So this is the reality that I think a lot of working parents are in, where you, especially if you're like working at home and the kids are now home, and there was some really great articles that were out recently about this. I think there was one that was circulating. It was from the New York Times or something that said, in the time of COVID, you can have kids or you can have a job, not both. Um, but I mean, it really is true because I feel like I just, like on days that I'm working, it's literally from in the morning to in the evening because I have to connect with people sometimes at, in different time zones and things like that. So like one meeting's at 8 p.m. my time at night. But um, beyond that, it's like because you're juggling so much and the kids are always home and you have these interjections in the middle of the day, like your brain is trying to like go back and forth so it's very interesting it is nice because I can do more activities on days that aren't super work intensive but like today just to be completely honest like I've been in meetings most of the day and I've had work things that I've had to attend to so it can pretty much look like this for the whole day Natalie's watching Descendants Isabella's playing on her computer and the house is not the cleanest but um but you know I mean that's just the reality of the situation and so we're just Everyone's got to do the best that they can. Dan's been back there working. He's still working from home and he's working from home indefinitely. So it just seems like this is going to be the situation for a while. Oh, and I just forgot actually my the last meeting of the day ran a little long and I forgot that school's meeting is actually going on right now, but it's recorded so I can watch it later. But turning my attention now to we dinner. We're having pizza for dinner tonight because that was basically all I could muster up the focus to do. And we're going to try to eat real quickly so I can chill out for about 30 minutes before um, I get ready for my last meeting of the day. Ham and pineapple pizza is one of our quick favorites. 